Just coming up at 7 minutes past 5 here on LCFM, and it's now time for this week's interview. It is a chat with a crime writer who has just published a book set on Lewis, and particularly Ness. The book is called The Black House. And to get the full details, let's see who Ian X. McKeever is talking to. Yes, indeed, thank you. Well, I'm now joined uh, on the line by Peter May, as we said earlier. He is the author of The Black House, a book set here in Stornoway. Peter May, I think I remember that name. <laughs> you would, Ian, yes. Hmm. Uh, I uh, I produced Macha for five years and uh, spent a long time uh, on the island uh, filming and uh, getting to know the place and the people. So is this like a like a spin-off? <laughs> Not exactly, no. I quit Macher in 1996 after we'd made, I think, 99 episodes at that point. Mm. Um, and I quit TV altogether. Really, all I, I had ever really wanted to do was write books. Um, and I would got into journalism and then I got a book published and then I developed that for television and that got me into television. And then for the next 15 to 18 years, I spent my life working in television as a script writer and then latterly as a producer. Um, and, you know, all of which was great and wonderful and a great experience. But what I really wanted to do was get back to books. So when I quit Macha and quit TV in 96, I turned my attention to a book that I'd been wanting to write for a long time, which was set in China. And that then led me off to China. And I spent many years visiting China and getting to know the Chinese police and uh, the justice system there and wrote a series of six thrillers set in China. And it was at the end of that period that I was sitting down thinking about what I wanted to do next, then my mind turned back to the Isle of Lewis. Let's go right back. You are a Scot, aren't you? Oh, yes. Where from? Glasgow, born and bred. Right. Do you have any connections to the islands? Other than Macher, no. Mm. Uh, I, I arrived in uh, the Isle of Lewis for the first time in 1990. Must have had a bit of an effect on you. <laughs> it certainly did. <laughs> uh, I spent, you know, the, the Maka years were very, uh, for me particularly, uh, you know, as both the creator but then as the producer were very, uh, shall we say, intense years. Mm. Um, and uh, I, I lived on the island five months a year during those uh, filming years uh, and had the respons full responsibility for the show, the budget, a cast and crew of nearly 60 people. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think we covered every blade of grass on the island, both filming, looking for locations, talking to people. So it was a it was hugely uh, intense and memorable experience for me, which is kind of what drew me back to it. You did these thrillers in China. Yes. Uh, you then started thinking about the Isle of Lewis. What about the book itself? Where did the concept come from? Were you an avid reader of? Cops and Robbers. I'm giving it away. That is a cop story, obviously. It is, yes. But, I mean, yes, I do like thrillers. I like uh, crime books. Like most people, I enjoy um, a, a good thriller movie. It wasn't necessarily what I set out to write. It's not what I wrote when I was working for television. Uh, I, I basically wrote people drama when I worked for television. But when I started writing uh, the first book set in China, I had a very clear story in my mind that I wanted to write. And I had to decide what way I was going to tell the story. And really, accidentally or, or just by chance, I decided that the way to do it would be through the investigation of a murder. If I had a, a discovery of a body in a Beijing park at the beginning of the book, the investigation of the murder would then allow me to tell the story that I wanted to, to tell. And of course... What that did was lead me into the genre of the crime thriller writer. And you know, mm. once you get put in that box, it's very hard as a writer to get out of it. And that's what publishers and readers want from you. So when I came to do the, the Lewis book, I was still obviously stuck in that genre. And, and it is a, 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 a crime story. It is a thriller. But more, much more than that, I think it's, it's a novel. Um, in many ways, it's the novel I always wanted to write. Uh, it's much more about people and the psychology of human beings and their interaction. Um, and Lewis provided a wonderful setting for that. I said it was set in Stornoway. Is it present day Stornoway? Well, it's not really Stornoway. I mean, it, it, the, most of the action revolves around a fictitious village in Ness. Um, the village is called Krobost. 
uh, and it, it, it's, as I say, fictitious, but it's kind of set along the cliffs overlooking the bay at Port of Ness. And the, it, the story is, yes, it's, it's uh, the crime story, if you like, is contemporary. The story that draws the character back to the island, the main character is called Finn MacLeod. He comes from the village of Trobost. He left the island aged 18, and now, 18 years later, he's returning. He went to go to university, but dropped out and ended up in the police force. And uh, as the book opens, um, he is currently a police officer in Edinburgh. He's just returning to duty after uh, a family tragedy, the death of his son in a hit-and-run road accident. And he is sent by his superiors to the Isle of Lewis to help an ongoing investigation into a murder which very much resembles a murder that he has been investigating in Edinburgh. And he's obviously sent back because he knows the island, he knows people, and more than anything else, he knows the victim. He's a former classmate of his. For him, it's a, it's a, you know, as for so many island people, it's a story of returning after many years of absence, seeing how things have changed, meeting old friends, remembering events in his life that shaped his future. Um, so to, to a very large extent, that's what the book is about. The, 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 um, the murder aspect of it is a kind of, it's almost coincidental, but it's the excuse for telling the story. Any parallels with any Gaelic soap operas we have known? <laughs> no, not really at all. Um, uh, it, it doesn't bear any relation at all to, to Macha. The story itself, at the heart of the story, is the annual Guga hunt. Obviously, in the book, I've fictionalised that, um, and it's 12 men of Krobost who go to the, uh, uh, the rock of Anskia. To rather, uh, Anskia. Anskia, yes. rather than Suliska. And... Um, but when I came up to do my research, because I came back to the island to specifically research this book, um, I uh, spent some time with Dodds McFarlane and some of the other uh, lads who go out to the rock. They were fantastic guys to talk to and were enormously helpful to me. Uh, we talked, we spent a long time talking about their own childhoods, what it was like for them growing up on the island in Ness, and, and many of the stories that shape the life of Finn, the main character, as we go back over it, are based on or borrowed from their experiences. I felt that I got through them a real insight to that element of growing up on the island at that period of time. A few other names are similar to ones we came across in the soap. <laughs> well, the names, yes. Uh, Marsley, the, the main female character in the book. Finn, which is, of course, an abbreviation of from Fiona. Mm -hmm. um, uh, his his son is called Fionla, uh, Arter, uh, his best friend. Uh, there is a Shawnee in the book as well, and I, I seem to remember a, a certain person who's not too far away now playing a certain character called Shawnee in a certain soap opera called Maka. The barman. Yes. <laughs> it was I for my sins. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Why was it published in French first? Well... Here's the thing, it was, I mean, I wrote the book about five years ago. Uh, I, when I, at the time I wrote it, I firmly believed it was the best thing I'd ever written. Uh, because, I, I mean, I'd invested huge amount of uh, myself in the book. There was a, an enormous emotional investment in the story. And I took it to my agent in London. He read it and loved the book, and he sent it out to all the British publishers. The feedback that I got from them was fantastic. They all loved the book, but nobody wanted to publish it. Basically because, you know, at that time it was before the, the, the Scandinavian writers had blazed a trail through the bestsellers with uh, uh, crime thrillers set in, in cold northern locations. And, and British publishers being ultra-conservative didn't at that time think that there would be a big enough readership uh, interested in reading a, 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 a crime story set in the Hebrides. Uh, and did, did the French take to it? They did. Mm -hmm. uh, I, because, you know, I, I, I was very disappointed with the reaction of the British. It turned out, of course, they were totally wrong. My French publisher, I, I told her about it a couple of years ago, and uh, she said, oh, I'd love to read the book. She read it, loved it, bought world rights on it, it immediately put it into translation. It was published in, in France last year, uh, became a bestseller in France. It's won literary prizes and uh, received 
a, a considerable number of nominations. L'Humanité, the French national daily newspaper, described it as a masterpiece. And as I travel around France promoting the book, you know, everybody loves it. And everybody who's read it wants to go to visit the island of Lewis. So uh, I obviously haven't done the, uh, the island too much damage. Is it out in the shops yet? Yes, it came out on Thursday. Right. Um, and uh, it's gone almost immediately into the top 100 best-selling mystery books on Amazon. Uh, it's been taken by um, a couple of the major supermarket chains, Asda and Sainsbury's, and it's Waterston's Book of the Month here in Scotland. Um, I'm doing a launch uh, in Edinburgh and another one in Glasgow. I would love to do one in Stornoway, but... Um, uh, I don't know how practical that will be, but uh, I'm certainly coming back up to the islands in the summer to mm. research another book because, you know, the, the publishers liked ultimately liked the book so much they wanted to turn it into a trilogy. So I've already written the second book. I was back researching that last summer and I will be up to research the third book this summer. Will it be a sequel? It, it, well, it's... Uh, <laughs> The funny thing is, you know, I mean, uh, the, the first book is about a murder, and, and I know that, um, you know, there aren't really very many murders committed on the island of Lewis. I think there was one in total in the whole of the 20th century. Mm. Uh, so on that basis, I've uh, used up my quota for the 21st century mm. already. Um, so, you know, I'm not I'm not coming to write about m murder and mayhem on the Isle of Lewis. Um, the, the second story is a is a story that uh, kind of delves back into history, um, although it has a contemporary setting. A, a lot of it is based on uh, the recollections of a man who's actually suffering from dementia, um, and uh, his life and how it led him to be where he is on the Isle of Lewis. There is a mystery element to the story, of course, as well. Um, so it, it's been a it's been an interesting return journey for me to to uh, follow up on the Black House and uh, to look at this new book, which is called The Lewis Man. It will be out at this time next year, um, and uh, a third book which I'll be writing this year. Right. Well, thank you for telling us about the Black House. It's a good weighty tome. Uh, twelve twelve ninety nine from Questus Books, I think. That's correct, yes. Available on the internet uh, from Amazon. Um, I'm sure the bookstore in Stornoway will almost certainly have it. Um, I don't know if there's an Asda in Stornoway these days, but... Uh, we have a Tesco and a big co-op. Tesco and a big co-op. I remember I used to go shopping at the big co-op, mm. um, but no Asda. Ah, it's, it's uh, Asda that have it. But, um, yeah, yes, uh, uh, available widely on the internet, but I'm pretty sure the bookstore in Stornoway will have it. Peter May, thank you very much for telling us all about it and good luck with the Black House. Many thanks Ian great pleasure. That was Peter May talking to Ian X McKeever uh, Peter May, formerly the producer of the Gaelic Soap Maha who is now an author and he has written the book The Black House which is available in all good bookshops priced 12 99